The table is a relatively simple project to design and build, and not only that, it's very useful. So let's make a table in Onshape. We'll make the table you see here, including a cost list of the board lengths that you'll need um, if you end up assembling it. If you'd like to follow along, um, I have links in the description to um, where you can make a free Onshape account so you can get going with this project. So the first step in this project will be making sure that we have the Beams custom feature script. This is an open source automation tool for making metal and lumber beams. So you can click custom features here and the beam feature. This will, this will save us a lot of time when we're making the model and it'll help us automate the cut list that we saw on the right side here too. So now to start modeling, we'll go to CAD.new. This is like um, Google's docs.new or slides.new, which make new text documents and presentations respectively. Except in this case, um, it makes a new unshaped document. So what we'll do first is we'll define a sort of rough skeleton of the whole system by creating a surface model. So let's click Shift S while having the top plane selected to make a new sketch. Now I'll do a center point rectangle. Um, it's going to be, oh, um, I forgot. Let's switch the units over to Imperial. I typically work in metric, but um, lumber is Imperial, so I think that'll be a little easier to follow along with. So let's go back into that sketch, double click, and let's add some dimensions. So in this case, um, I'll make the table 72 millimeters wide, I mean 70, 72 inches wide, so you symmetric, and let's say 48 inches um, long. So um, now let's take this, what, what we'll do actually to make this a little easier to work with in the future is let's add a new plane here off of the top plane and offset it um, 30 inches or so. This is a good height for a table and this will let us reference this height multiple times later on more easily. Now let's choose the extrudes tool and we'll choose the surface extrudes tool. Select all of that with the box select and we'll go up to face with this plane over here. So now we have a sort of skeleton here. To use the beams feature scripts, you can click up here to search. You can also go to this drop down and scroll through. If you have less features, it's easier to find, or you can press Alt C. And you type beams once you have the search open, so type beams, or just beam. And since I used it previously, it's already set to timber, lumber, 2x4. So um, set this to timber, lumber, and 4x4. These will be our table legs. So first let's select these two opposite sides um, and move the legs in. Um, now we can hit shift enter to repeat the feature and add some more beams. So I'll select these two over here and I'll move them in. These also need to be 4x4s. The reason why I'm doing them in opposite corners like that is because um, the it's, it's good to kind of split your beam features down to kind of atomic one or two beam sets. Um, and in this case, the offsetting works most effectively when you have them like that. So now that we have these, let's go on and make some more, let's make some more beams. So shift enter to repeat the feature. This time we'll use a two by four and we'll start by doing these longer edges over here. So you can use the triad manipulators like this to budge, to nudge them around um, to wherever you need them. Now that looks good, so let's do another shift enter. Select these two. This is going to be two by fours again. And we'll nudge them out and down again. So um, we want to have the table have a clean look and also be a bit more sturdy. So if we um, if we extend these beams over to this side over here, we can add some screws going through like that, which will make them a bit stronger. So select trim on the left side, and for planar faces, choose these two faces over here. This will extend the beams like that. All right, so next let's use the delete part feature and delete this surface over here. That'll clean things up because we don't need it anymore. And let's let's get on with um, adding some structural reinforcement. So let's select the plane over here, add a new sketch. We can press N to orient normal to the sketch um, and then press R to add this rectangle here. So um, I'll snap it down to the line here, and I'll add a line over here from this point snapping over to the corner here. What we can do is if we press the E key here, or we can also select the equals constraint up here, if we make this line equal to this one, then we'll get this nicely centered, sort of like divided into thirds setup like that. Now let's do another beams tool, so Alt-C, type beam, enter, 
and we'll be using um, 2x4s again. Let's select these two. If you do a box select to the left, it'll select everything that's even slightly within, so that's a quicker way to select these two lines. It also looks like they're sideways, so let's rotate them 90 degrees and push them down a little. So it looks like we have a good support for the table section itself. Enter to close the feature. Shift enter repeats, just enter closes. Now um, let's go down to the bottom and add some supports here so that the legs aren't too wobbly. I'll add another plane here. So if you have a bunch of small planes close to each other, it can be hard to select, so you can just select it from the left side like that, top there. Now I'll have it um, offset 8 inches up. Now let's make another sketch on here, so select Shift S, you can also press Shift S first and then select it. Um, and now we'll do a rectangle from here over to here. So it's not snapping to this point because it's not in the same plane as the sketch. So let's go ahead and select the coincident constraint, click this here, and that there. Alright, so we have this centered rectangle now, and um, I pressed escape there, it's showing up as some weird character there. And now let's add a line from these center points. So center point here to center point there. This will be the beam that comes across. So right now where we are in the modeling stages, we're creating the sketch that lays these one these beams out. And I'll select these two and make them construction geometry. I can either click up here or press Q after selecting them. Um, this is just kind of a good design practice to um, say these lines aren't used to make the model 3D. They're just there to help us um, get the other lines in the right positions. So now let's do Alt-C and another Beams tool. And so if we select this, we already have 2x4 up here. You might need to switch that. Rotate it 90 degrees and pull it out a little. We should also move it down a bit so we can um, lay the other beam on top there. So if the frame rate's a bit choppy, um, it's a bit much for my laptop to record and model at the same time. So I'll go over here, unhide this, I did shift enter to repeat that last action. Alright, 90 degrees here. And we'll pull it down again, and let's pull it out again like that. Alright, now we're on to the last beam, so shift enter one last time. Select this line here, and it looks like it's already laid flat, so we just need to pull it up a little bit. Alright, perfect. So now we can select all of these, shift, select all of them, right click, and edit the appearance. We'll have the appearance be this sort of wood-like color here, and then you can select them again and add a material. So, oh, the phone went off. Looks like you can't quite see it behind here, so let's say fur. Now let's make the plywood top piece here. So um, we'll do another sketch here on this top plane over here. It's going to be a rectangle centered at the center there, going out to here, and now we'll add some dimensions. The reason why I sketched on the plane here instead of over here is because um, otherwise when we need to extrude, we would also have to select the face in here. It's a little cleaner um, if we do it this way. So D to use the dimension tool, and we'll just have it stick out one inch over the edge. Again like that. Perfect. And now we, if we press the extrude tool um, up here, it'll already have instantly selected all of this. We we'll use half inch plywood, um, one inch plywood is overkill for a table. Oh, half inch, not quarter inch. Perfect, so now we just have this last piece to um, assign a material. Sorry for the screencast cap um, going over there. Now I'll add an appearance, same as the other one, this sort of wood. Okay, perfect. We can press Shift P to hide all of the other geometry that we used to make this, and now we have the table. It looks, I think it's about the same. Now it also, because we used the beams tool, it automatically made this cut list for us. This means that when we're working in the shop, we can just have the model open. You see, okay, we need four 30 inch long beams, we need four 48 inch long beams, etc., etc. Um, and for the plywood piece itself, if we want to measure how big we need to make it, just click one line here, we can see 77 inches, and the other line here is 53 inches. So hopefully, this was an interesting tutorial and it didn't drag out for too long. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and if you want to see more tutorials like this, I recommend subscribing. I'm going to be starting a daily CAD challenge soon too, where there are some simpler models with a new problem every day. They're designed to be simple in terms of the number of features, so like four or five features, but interesting and complex to kind of figure out. So subscribe if you want to see those. Thanks for watching, and till the next video.